back, Hidzu friends. Today we're going to read the story Honeybee Man by Leela Nargi and Kristen Brooker. In this story, our main character is a beekeeper or honeybee man. This means that he takes care of bees to collect and eat their honey. While we read today, I want you to pay close attention to the different jobs that the honeybees have and that the honeybee man has. Honeybee Man. One quiet July dawn, Fred rolls out of his bed and into his slippers. He greets two members of his enormous family. Good morning, Copper, he calls to his dog, still curled up on the rug. Good morning, Cat, he calls to his cat, named Cat. He stretches in a pool of sunlight. Fred shuffles downstairs to the kitchen and fixes a cup of tea. He takes his teacup in one hand and creaks back upstairs, then up another flight. Climbing a ladder that climbs up the wall, he pushes open a hatch and pulls himself out onto the roof. All around is quiet Brooklyn City, brownstones and linden trees, a tall clock tower and bridges in the distance. Near the edge of the roof is another tiny city. It has three houses, each with two white stories and one red story, and inside thousands of tiny rooms made of wax. From the outside, the tiny city also seems quiet. Fred inhales the smells of a summer city morning, maple leaves and gasoline and the river and dust. He turns to the tiny city and inhales its smaller, sweeter smell, like a little like caramel, a little like ripe peaches. To the first little house, Fred calls, good morning, Queen Mab. And to the other two houses, good morning, Queen Nefertiti, good morning, Queen Boadicea. Then Fred greets the rest of his family, which has more members than he can count. Good morning, my bees, my darlings. Inside their houses, the three queen bees and their thousands of worker bees, daughters, don't answer. But Fred knows they are busy. The queens are laying eggs. Some workers are building wax rooms. Some are feeding babies. Some are making the hive tidy. Others are getting ready to forage in flowers, a bloom all across Brooklyn. Fred closes his eyes and lets his mind wander. Will Queen Mab's daughters find mint flowers as they did last year? Will Queen Boadicea's honey be dark like molasses or light and clear like amber? He thinks about honey. Fred's mouth begins to water. I can't wait to find out. Fred pictures the park at the end of his block. He imagines his bees moving from clover to clover, flying over them low and slow with their see-through wings, which flap and also twist like propellers. Fred wishes he could fly there with them, with the wind rushing over his back. Fred opens his eyes and the hives are alive, humming with a low hum, as low as a whisper. Fred hums back. Tell me what it's like to fly through the world. Zzzz, hum the bees. To Fred, this sounds like an answer, if only he could understand. Young bees on their first flights circle in the air. There, there, my girls, don't be afraid, Fred says in a soothing voice. As he speaks, the young bees seem to pluck up their courage. On the streets below, trucks rumble and babies wail in their strollers. But inch by inch, the young bees shimmy past the edge of their tiny city. It is easy for Fred to recognize the older bees who are used to moving between their small world and the giant world of people. They zip out of the hives and throw themselves in the air, embracing it with their wings. A few land on Fred's arms. Hello, Fred, they seem to say. Hello, girls, have a nice day. Now off you go. Fred gives them a gentle flick with a finger and away they zzzz. 
Fred watches his bees fly into his backyard garden and other gardens on the block. He sees the bees dive into sweet pea and squash flowers. If he were closer, he could see them using their tube-like tongues to drink in flower nectar, which they store in honey sacks inside their bellies. Then it's off to the next pea plant, to the sage flowers in the next backyard, and maybe, if Fred is lucky, to blooming blueberry bushes somewhere across town. When the bees return to their hives, Fred notices that they are flying slowly, heavy now with nectar. Inside, Fred knows they are performing waggle dances to tell the others where the best flowers grow. He knows that sister bees are taking the nectar and storing it in the tiny wax rooms. And he knows that others are fanning their wings to evaporate the water from the nectar so it will turn into honey. Day after day, Fred watches the bees zip out over the blare of the city. How tireless you are, he sighs, wishing he could be as strong and as free as the bees. One afternoon, at the end of August, Fred climbs again to his roof. He's wearing his black rubber rain boots and his white head veil and a scratch on his hand from the cat, the cat, who did not want to be woken this morning. He makes an announcement to the bees. Sweeties, I have come for the honey and a plea. Please do not sting me. Fred puffs clouds of smoke into the tiny houses and the bees burrow deep down into the hive. From the very top floor, Fred lifts out the honeycomb. He packs it into buckets and says, thank you for this honey, bees. Zzz. Fred hauls the buckets down the ladder and into his house where he banishes Copper, the honey-loving dog, to the kitchen. Fred sets a frame of honeycomb over a plastic tank and slices off the wax caps and the honey begins to flow. He places the honeycomb in a spinning machine which squeezes every last drip of honey out of it. He pours the honey into jars, then he sticks labels to the jars, Fred's Brooklyn Honey, made by tireless Brooklyn bees. In the afternoon, Fred sits on his stoop, enjoying the cool end of summer breeze. When his neighbors come out to chat, Fred gives each of them a jar of deep gold honey. One neighbor asks, where did this honey come from? And Fred says in a humming sort of whisper, from the sweet pea flowers in your backyard, from the flowers of the linden trees shading our block, and maybe, if we're lucky, from sour sweet blueberry bushes somewhere across town. Up on Fred's roof, the bees are huddled back in their own city, waiting for the rays of tomorrow's sun to call them up and away over Brooklyn. Their wings are tattered from flying and the nip of autumn is in the air. Soon it will be time to rest. Down on the stoop, Fred opens a jar of honey. The honey glistens and shimmers in the last of the sunlight. Fred sticks in a finger. It is sweet like linden flowers. It is sharp like rosemary. It is ever so slightly sour. Ah, says Fred, absorbing these happy flavors, blueberries. The end. If you enjoyed this book and want to learn more about bees and their jobs, check out the KidsU Outdoor Discovery Pack series at KidsU at Home. Mm -hmm.